Good morning. Having come together as God's family, let us pause for a moment and consider how we stand before God and one another. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God and author of everything that is good, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah, because the Israel, Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You hear, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come in his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God. And we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Christ Jesus, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly, Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of the land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with the Samaritans. But Jesus answered her and said, if you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the cistern and drank from it himself with his children and with his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. <coughs> the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband, for you have five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but your people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. Indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus looked and said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still, no one said, what are you looking for or why are you talking with her? The woman left with her water and went into town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus looked and said to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish that work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe with for the harvest, for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, and the sower and reaper can rejoice forever. For here is the saying verified that the one who sows another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of the town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, 
And so he remained there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Lent, as we know, is a time for us to encounter Jesus in a very positive way, in a very personal way. And so we deepen our baptismal consecration and our commitment to the Lord. In today's Gospel, St. John tells us that he wrote about an encounter of Jesus with a Samaritan woman so that we may believe that he is the Messiah. We may believe that he is the Son of God, and that through this belief, we, have, we may have life eternal in him. Notice that during this encounter, Jesus is drawing the woman beyond earthly realities and concerns to the deeper realities of the eternal, of the deeper realities of what is ahead. Jesus offers her living water he means water that will give eternal life. But her attention is on earthly water. She asks him if, a bit sarcastically if he thinks he's better than Jacob, who gave them that well. But as you see, Jesus is not distracted from his goal. His goal is to give her water that will permanently end her thirst. All she can see is the convenience of not having to come to the well each and every morning. As Jesus speaks with her, he moves her to a new level by getting her to face the present position, by getting her to face what is going on in her life at the present moment. But what is most interesting to note is that he doesn't tell her, come back when you've straightened out your life. The grace he offers is meant to help her straighten out her life now, to help her straighten out her life now and to change it. Rather than make a commitment now, she says that she's waiting for the Messiah to come. But Jesus can offer her the opportunity for a personal commitment now. He can offer her the grace to change now because he tells her, I am he. The purpose of today's story is to remind us that even committed disciples need to be brought to a deeper understanding. Even committed disciples need a personal conversion. And that personal conversion is to happen not just once, not just weekly, not just during Lent, that personal conversion we are called to accept each and every day. And so we are left with several questions. How great is our thirst during this Lenten season? What is the food that we are seeking? What is it that Jesus wants us to understand through our Lenten encounters with him? St. Paul reminds us that God has proven his love for us while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait until we were ready. He gave us his life so that we can be ready. Our Lenten journey will be more fruitful, St. Francis de Sales tells us, if we are sincerely open to encountering the Christ. Encountering him in various ways and situations in which we find ourselves daily. Encountering him in the various faces we meet. And finally, if we are open and willing to be led by grace in a deeper conversion of mind and heart to the way of the Lord. Then, as Francis de Sales tells us, our hope will be based on the love of God poured out into our hearts. 
Today, our Lord looks at each of us and says, do you want that water that brings eternal life? If you do, I am here to help you. I am the Christ. And may that same God bless each of you in your efforts as he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Having heard God's word and having reflected upon what that word means in our lives, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pause now as we place our petitions before the throne of God. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith. And for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that during Lent we will be renewed in faith through our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left the church or abandoned the faith, that the Holy Spirit will move them to repentance and reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, the young men and women from our own family will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us, and for our parish seminarians, Deacon Tony Bennett, Deacon Mike Nugent, James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Bono, and for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, and for our deceased, especially Dr. Paul J. Dugan, the uncle of Father Saunders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Maria Uratia, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal attentions held in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we come before you this morning with our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear the petitions which we have spoken aloud and all the prayers and petitions each of us holds in our hearts. 
We place them before you in the name of Christ Jesus, your Son. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. pleased with the sacrifice we have for your holy and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon from our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for a water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did, her thirst, did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks with the angels and saints. We praise your mighty deeds as we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. <clears throat> May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health and mind and body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We have only a couple announcements this morning. Our poor box collection this weekend is for the Red Cloud Indian School staffed by the Jesuits on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Please see the bulletin for the various spiritual and charitable activities during Lent. Men, we need you to sign up as volunteers for work camp and for early morning adoration during our 40 hours devotion beginning March 21st. Please see the bulletin for the details. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in this mystery may come to true completion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.